Hello everyone, it's Mari here for Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine and happy World Card Making Day. I'm really excited today to bring you some cards that I'm going to be creating that are going to be interactive cards. I'm going to be using some really adorable products from Spellbinders including this really sweet Dance and Figgy Pudding die set. So I'm going to get started here by assembling this really sweet little die these really sweet little die cut pieces. I have die cut that little icing part for the figgy pudding out of white and then the face portion of the pudding I have die cut from some craft cardstock from Spellbinders. I'm using some Spectrum Noir Harmony Water Reactive Ink in Seal Brown to do a little bit of ink blending onto this craft cardstock. And all that's going to really achieve is to add just that little bit of extra color, adding some dimension onto this cardstock piece. So I've just taken my tool here for ink blending. This is just a, a dome foam blending tool from scrapbook.com. And I'm just going ahead here and blending on that brown ink just onto the edges of that craft cardstock from Spellbinders. And so you can see here, I'm trying to get the darkest portion of the ink on the outer edge of this figgy pudding. And in that way, it's just going to kind of leave the center area lighter and then that darker shadow around the outside edge. And that's really going to define the edges of this piece nicely and add that definition and depth to the die cut piece. So I really like doing this with my die cuts when I've die cut them out of colored cardstock. I think it just adds that extra little bit of detail and I love the look when it's finished. So I'm almost done here. I'm just going to finish this up and you'll be able to see how that looks. And I'm going to use my tweezers throughout this process of assembling these pieces because some of the pieces are fairly small and intricate. I'm going to use my Gina K liquid adhesive bottle here to add my liquid adhesive. I'm using some Gina K Connect glue in that liquid adhesive bottle. And I really love using those little bottles for these fine pieces, like these little pieces with the Spellbinders die set. So you can just see how that icing just goes nicely onto the top there of the pudding. And that just is so adorable. I love these sets so much. I love the interactivity, but I also love working with Spellbinders dies. I love the detail of all of these, all of the different die sets that Spellbinders offers. All of these little bitty die cut pieces just add the most adorable details to whatever project it is that you're working on. So in this case here, I've got the little holly that's been cut from some green cardstock. This is again, uh, a cardstock from Spellbinders. I am forgetting the names of all of the cardstocks, I'm sure, but you can uh, definitely check out the Spellbinders cardstock. Uh, they have magnificent cardstock. I love it. So I'm going in with one of the red colors here. I'm going to just pop those berries on where I've added that glue. And I think the red is maybe called phone, bo phone booth red, perhaps. Um, but I'm just going to press that in using my tool here just to pick up those little berries and place them into the right spot where the liquid adhesive is. So that's going to finish up that sweet little piece there. And that is just going to go up onto that little icing area and add that little bit of detail to the top of the figgy pudding. And oh my gosh, it's going to be so cute when it's finished. So I'm also going to be using some adhesives by 3L. These are their thin foam squares. I really love using their thin foam squares for assembling a card because the depth of the, the foam adhesive is just perfect for adding these little details without adding too much dimension to the project. So in this particular case, I really wanted to use the thinner foam for adding some of these little details to the project. Now I just stopped the recording to double check the color of cardstock that's green there. That green cardstock is called Rainforest and the red is called Phone Booth Red. So love that combination of those two colors for that holly and the holly berries there. And now I'm just going to go ahead and grab the scarf portion of the die cuts. So the scarf is die cut from teal topaz from Spellbinders. And then the little red stripes are die cut again from the phone booth red. Now, the really great thing too about the Spellbinders dies is they add the etched lines to help you 
know where to put the details. So the little lines on the scarf for adding these stripes are etched into that teal topaz cardstock. So it makes it really super easy to know where to put these different little die cut pieces when you're ready to add them onto your project. So I've lined those up ahead of time just to save a little bit of time in the video here, but it was really easy to do. And I'm always really grateful when companies do that with their dies because those etched lines are really, really major time savers for sure. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my connect glue here to add these different little pieces onto that teal topaz. I love that teal topaz color. It's gorgeous, super pretty. And I love how it coordinates so nicely with the, the teal uh, with the foam booth red. I think the red and teal are just a really stunning combination here. So just adding that last little stripe onto the scarf, just using my uh, craft tool here with the sticky end and then the pointy end to help me get those into the right spot. And once I'm happy with how those are looking, I am going to soon add this onto my figgy pudding. Now you can add this higher or lower onto your little pudding face. Um, I wanted to make sure that the edges of the scarf were lined up quite nicely with the pudding. So I put it a fairly low on the face. And so you'll just see me here placing that down, giving that a good press to make sure that it, it, is, it is adhered to that craft cardstock base. Now I have die cut the arms for the Ficky Pudding out of black cardstock. Again, this is a Spellbinders cardstock. I am going to put some adhesive down onto the mitten area. And I did die cut the mittens from the phone booth red again as well. And so I'm just gonna pick up those little mittens and adhere those down onto the spot where they go. The um, knot on the scarf or the tail on the scarf is a die cut from the same colors that I've used previously, except I did use the white cardstock from Spellbinders to create that little tassel on the scarf. So I'm just gonna add these pieces on again using my tweezers and my connect glue. And again, I will say the precision of that little glue bottle is really fantastic for these little tiny die cut pieces. And just using my tweezers again to get those into place, I'll give those a really nice press and make sure that they are adhered before we start to think about assembling the rest of these pieces together. So I'm just um, trying to figure out here where I want to put the tail of the scarf. And so I'm just gonna put this over to the side, just trying to be mindful of keeping the stripes sort of even. And so I'm just going to place this in between those two red pieces. And so that completes that portion of the top part of the figgy pudding. I'm just picking up a little bit of the liquid adhesive that oozed out of there. And now we're ready to start thinking about the other parts of the card. So this is the little mechanism that actually makes the little figgy pudding dance. And so you'll see that the top portion of the die cut piece here has a circle or a loop. And you'll see when I go to assemble the card, what the loops role is in creating the little dancer for the dancing figgy pudding. I'm going to just go ahead and put the little red boots over top of the area on the black cardstock that is shaped like the boots and that is going to add the detail to the lower portion of our little figgy pudding. Now I'm going to be using these pieces here. I used the notched corner frames from Spellbinders as well as a gorgeous 3D embossing folder. This is called um, Vintage Ornaments and it is beautiful. I love how this embossed the paper. You can just see here the texture that that's added to this frame. And so I die cut that piece out of white cardstock and then used the 3D embossing folder to emboss it. And I used the larger, the one size larger frame to die cut the phone booth red piece to adhere the embossed piece onto. So I'm using an A2 size top folding card base here out of white cardstock. And I'm going to add this red frame next onto my card base, just again with a little bit of liquid adhesive here. So I'm just going to get that onto there. <clears throat> just making sure that I get a little bit around the perimeter of that frame. 
to ensure that it's nicely adhered around the edges. And then I'll just center that as best as I can onto my white card base, give that a really nice press, and then I'll add the 3D embossed piece on top of that. Just gonna get that down there. I've got some foam adhesive on the back of this um, embossed piece. So it's just a little bit dimensional on top of that red cardstock. And now I'm going to start to work on assembling our little dance and figgy pudding. I'm just going to give that a really nice press there and make sure that foam adhesive is all nicely adhered to that red cardstock. And now I'm going to start to um, add the last details to my figgy pudding. So I'm just going to go ahead and adhere a piece of white cardstock onto the back of the pudding of the craft cardstock there because I do want to add the eyes and the cheek detail in there. And so I just want that white card base behind the face so that I have a spot to adhere the eyes and the cheeks to. So I'm going to add the little eyes in black. I've die cut them from black cardstock and the little cheeks I've die cut from pink. So I'm going to add a small amount of liquid adhesive into those areas where the details are going to be placed. And again, I'll just use that sticky end of my tool here to grab those little die cut pieces and then I'll use the pokey end of the tool to just move those, wiggle those into place. Super, super cute. You could even take your white gel pen if you wanted and add a little dot of white to these eyes. I did not do that, but that is something that you could do if you wanted to just give the eyes a little more detail, just give them a little bit of a glisten. And then there's that last little cheek piece to complete that face. So now the face is completed. You can see that the die um, die cuts in and embosses into the paper, the mouth and the eyebrows and some little dots, which are super, super cute detail on this little figgy pudding. So now we're ready to make this interactive. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a round foam dot and I'm going to add that to that circle in the of that black die cut piece there. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that. And here you can see I've got that foam adhesive here. I'm using some sticky, sticky thumb foam circle adhesive from American Crafts. And I'm going to, I like these ones because they're circular shaped. You could use a square and it would still work. But I like the idea of using a circle. And these are really nice and thick. So that's that's going to be good too because there's going to be a nice little bit of space between that black circle piece and the face of the figgy pudding. So I'm just getting that pushed down into place. I'll take the release paper off the top. <clears throat> and when I'm just happy with how I think, you know, the placement is on the, the project, where it is and if it's centered and all that kind of thing, I'm just going to push it, uh, push the circle cardstock out of the way so that I can go ahead and adhere that figgy pudding onto that, the sticky portion of that foam circle. So once I'm, I've got that on there and it's pressed into place and I'm happy with um, how it's centered and, and that kind of thing, then I'm ready to go on to the next step. So I'm just going to play with it a little bit and make sure that I have it exactly where I want it. So now I'm just going to add a little more foam adhesive in behind the figgy pudding to make sure that it's all this has the same amount of dimension as that foam uh, dot that's in the little circle. And you can just see how cute that is, how the little legs um, move back and forth and swing. So cute. And I did leave a spot below the figgy pudding for the sentiment. So now I'm just going to go ahead and add the arms onto the figgy pudding just by adding some liquid adhesive to those and get those gl glued in as well. And you can have these in whatever motion you want. I just thought it would be cute to have them kind of up in the air like this. And this is definitely the positioning that's on the packaging of the Spellbinders packaging for this die set. And I just thought it looked super cute. So my little arms are going to be up in the air like that for the little figgy pudding. And he's or she, it, <laughs> the figgy pudding is just loving its life. 
Super cute. Love it. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue this last arm in here and get that placed down. And then we will be ready to move on to the sentiment. Again, just using that Gina K Connect glue to get these things all positioned into place. And I really love that glue because it does have a little bit of open time so that you can wiggle things into place, but it does stick really, really well. So now we're going to go on to the sentiment. This is the um, dancing, I'm just thinking here for a second, dancing Christmas sentiments is what this is called. And this is the first time I've used it. So I'm just going to take my thumb and condition the stamp and make sure that there's no kind of film on that stamp so that it stamps nicely. I'm taking my Tailored Expressions anti-static powder tool and rubbing that over top of my black cardstock just to ensure that my embossing powder only sticks to my embossing ink. So I'm going to be using Versamark watermark ink or embossing ink. This is a clear sticky ink. It's going to stamp out the sentiment onto that black cardstock with a clear ink and a kind of a watermark impression so that when I run the white embossing powder over top of it, that embossing powder is going to stick to that clear sticky ink. And I'll just tap off the excess embossing powder there. And then I'll just take this to my heat tool and melt the embossing powder. And that's just going to make a really nice crisp white sentiment on that black cardstock for our project. And the sentiment says special delivery from me to you which is very cute. And it's fun because that Dance and Christmas sentiment set has sentiments on it that really coordinate nicely with all of the different little dance and um, characters. So there's like gingerbread people and the next card is going to be a penguin and so on. So there's a few sets that they have that have these dance and elements and they have had these in the past as well. You've probably seen the little dance and characters before. And these are the newest ones. So they're they're just adorable. And I love the interactivity of them. I think that they're just so, so cute. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my liquid adhesive to center that. Sorry, I'm getting my head in the way there a little bit. And just get that adhered down onto that embossed cardstock. I'm going to give that a really good press because it is embossed. It's just going to need a little bit of pressure there to stay put. And I'm just looking at it now to make sure that I'm happy with the placement of everything. I think it looks really super cute. And here you can just see how the little legs swing through the sentiment at the bottom. It's adorable. I love it. So that dance and figgy pudding is just so, so cute. I think the face on this die cut or this die is just absolutely adorable. So really love that. And so that card is all finished and we're ready to start the next card. And the next card is going to be using the Dance and Penguin, Penguin set. So this is another die set that does have those interactive, that interactive element to it where the little feet move. So I'm using, again, some black cardstock from Spellbinders. I'm using the Phone Booth Red as, as well for this little penguin. And I have cut out the little face and body using some white cardstock. So I'm just going to go ahead and adhere the white cardstock onto that black base and start to get this sweet little penguin assembled. So once I've got the adhesive on the back of this white cardstock piece, I can just go ahead and place this onto that black base and get that just in the right spot to line up all the other areas of the penguin. So just giving that a good press to make sure that that's adhered down. And next we're going to go ahead and add the little beak on the penguin and the sweater. Now this orange cardstock here is just a piece from my scraps and my stash and it's just going to go right there in that little spot identified for the little beak. And then this really sweet little sweater is just going to place be placed over top of the torso of the penguin, like so. So really adorable. And it, you could go ahead and add some details to that piece if you wanted with your gel pen or your stickles. You could also die cut this out with some patterned paper. And so you could, your little penguin could be wearing a little plaid sweater or whatever. I chose solid color cardstock here, but you could definitely use, be creative with the types of cardstock that you use for these different little elements. 
So I'm just going to use my tweezers to get this in the right spot. And I have used some Spellbinders Glacier cardstock for the little um, scarf here. So I've got some liquid adhesive on the back of that. I'm just going to go ahead and get that adhered down. The sweet little hat for our little penguin again is cut from the phone booth red. And there's just going to be a little bit of white fur on that as well. And that will be indicated with a little strip of white cardstock that was die cut from white. So I'm just getting that into place there. I'm just going to grab the little brim of the hat or the little fur piece here and get that onto the, the little hat area. And then there's a little die cut piece of white from the white cardstock again for the little pom pom on the hat. <clears throat> just use my tweezers and get that into place and give that a press and I'm going to finish off the face of our sweet little penguin with a little bit of pink cardstock in that cheek area and that's going to complete all the details for this main part of the penguin. Now once I've got that placed in the right spot we're ready to move on to some more of the details and we're going to add the little skates onto the black base for those skates. This would be really cute cut from some silver cardstock as well to make the little blades of the skates silver. Just adding a little bit of liquid adhesive on there to add the little red boots for the skates. And those little skates are just so cute. Love those. They're adorable. And just grab that other one and get that into place. And then the little star with the stick, I guess you would call it a little wand. I did cut from some Spellbinders brushed gold cardstock. And I'm going to adhere that onto the back of the little flipper of the penguin or the wing. And <clears throat> that'll complete the little penguins details for that top portion. Now I have used another Spellbinders um, 3D embossing folder for the details for the front of this card. This embossing folder is called GeoScreen and I'm just going to go ahead and add that to one of the notched frame dies here. And so I've die cut the smaller one Again, using that embossing folder and that notched frame die, and then the larger frame is from black cardstock. So I'll just go ahead and adhere those together and onto the A2 size top folding white card base here. And so once I've got that all nicely in place and pressed down, I'm going to be using this ornament frames die from Spellbinders to add more of a focal point to my card. <clears throat> so I've cut the scallop portion from some brush gold cardstock and I'm going to put some foam adhesive onto the back of that and adhere it onto that embossed piece, just centering it. And once I've got that in place, I'm going to go ahead and cut the other oval that's part of that ornament frames die set from some glacier cardstock and adhere that into the center area of that scallop frame. Just giving that a good press to make sure that that's adhered to that embossed piece behind it and adding some more liquid adhesive here to the glacier piece and I'll go ahead and adhere that onto the brushed gold. I love that brushed gold cardstock from Spellbinders. I think it's so gorgeous. So here now you can see I've got the little black circular piece here ready to go to add my circle foam dot. And I'm going to just add this sweet little penguin over top, just my, being mindful of trying to center this in that oval. And once I've got that into place, I'm going to add a little more foam adhesive in behind the penguin just to make sure that it's all adhered at the same level of dimension. And that's going to finish the front of the card. Now you can just see how sweet those little skates are and how nicely they move. The interactivity is absolutely adorable. I did go ahead and put a coordinating sentiment in the inside of the card and that's going to finish off my projects today. 
Happy World Card Making Day, friends. I know that there's a ton of inspiration on the Scrapbook and Cards Today YouTube channel today. Make sure you check the description box below for all of the details. Have an awesome day and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye, friends.